In this video, we're looking at the LZX Arch. Arch contains three extremely useful utility circuits, and while it doesn't seem to have much in the way of onboard controls, it adds a ton of flexibility to other modules in your system. Arch contains an analog logic processor. As opposed to traditional logic units, instead of a binary output, Arch gives a full gradient image. Next to that, we have a rectifier circuit, which is similar to what you find in a staircase. And below that, we have a gamma processor. Gamma processing allows you to adjust your gradient by keeping the black and white point of your image the same and just modifying the spectrum of grays in between. By crossfading the square and log out, you can achieve the full range of gamma possibilities. So let's jump right in and start patching. So I'm going to use a ramp output from the diver. I'm just going to show you what this looks like really quick. So there you have a basic H plus V output. Set that back to zero. So the diver is creating a circular shape. So I'm going to take the individual H and V outputs and put those into the two inputs of the logic processor in the arch. So I can take any one of these outputs and immediately you'll start to see a much different image. So if I go through the different logic outputs, you can see your min, your max, your absolute output, your intersection output, and your clip output. So as you can see, we're getting full gradients. To make things a little clearer to see, I'm going to put these into a keyer first. So I'm going to go into the source input on my topogram. And just take the three output. So what we can see now is that we're able to turn that circular ramp into a square. I'll go to min, max, absolute, intersection, a little stronger, and clip. So already you can see we're getting a much different range of possibilities. And of course we have negative versions as well. So if I flip the negative switch, we're going to get a bunch of new possibilities. That one's pretty cool. So here I'm generating a basic rectilinear shape by using the max output into the topogram. Arch doesn't have any control voltage inputs, which means we'll have to process the signal some other way if we want to get animation. So I'm going to take my H plus V ramps, I'm going to put them both into a passage. I'll patch these back up. And now I could take an LFO and use that to start to modulate the two channels. But Arch has another useful trick up its sleeve. The rectifier section, while it can be used on video rate signals, can also be used on slower modulation signals like LFOs. So if I plug this into the rectifier, I'm now going to get three separate but related LFO outputs. So let me show you what each of these looks like. So first I'll show you what the basic LFO looks like. This is the signal that's going into the arch. If I plug into the mirror output, I'm going to get an LFO at double the speed. If I plug into the darks and lights output, I'm going to get sort of a clamped LFO with a different general shape. So this gives me three different LFO options. So with my one master LFO, I'm now getting two different variations I can use to control different parts of my shape. And if I change the overall speed, it changes them all together. So this is a nice, very convenient use of the rectifier. So now to show you the gamma processor, I'm going to take a different output from the same logic combination, say the absolute, go into the gamma processor, and let's take a look at this. So I'm going to go into another channel of color chords. Just make this totally white for now. So 
So as you can see, the two gamma outputs give me very different results. If you want to know the exact math behind what's going on in the arch, the user reference card gives you diagrams outlining what the gamma processor is actually doing. With the square output, we're getting a lot less white information. The log is pushing everything in the middle up towards white. So that gives you two very cool variations. We could also take the square and log and mix them together. So I'm going to plug one into the positive on a mixer, the other into a negative on a mixer, and there we get yet another variation. There's also a negative switch, and in this case isn't going to make too much of a difference. So I'm going to pull these colors back a little bit, and we can reintroduce our original square. Cool. So now because this is a gradient, it's excellent fodder for processing with other expedition modules. So I can put this into a staircase, take one of the outputs, oops, need a longer cable, I'll put that into layer two, and there you go. So now that we have a decent understanding of the basics of how the arch works, let's look at another pattern generating example. So in that first patch, we looked at how you can process ramps to create a nice basic shape like a square, and then get some more flexibility out of that one basic shape by using the arch. In this example, we're going to look at building a more intricate pattern. So to start, I'm going to take an output from the prismatic ray and plug that into one input on the arch. I'm going to take the absolute output, so we have something to start looking at. And immediately you can see we have some nice vertical bars. Next, I'm going to do a quick trick to get some horizontal bars. I'm going to take the vertical output of my ramp generator, in this case a diver. I'm going to put it into a staircase. Take one of the outputs, put that into my second input. Great. So this is just a quick trick to generate a bunch of horizontal bars if you don't have a second oscillator. So already you can see this is doing something pretty cool. And if I go through the different outputs, I can see my min, I can see my max, which is a nice checkerboard, uh, the intersection output, and the clip output. And there we go. And again, we're getting a nice, fairly smooth gradient output. In the last example, we looked at using the rectifier to process LFOs. Now let's look what happens when we use it to process a video signal. So I'll take that mirror output, and plug that absolute signal, back into the input on the rectifier. So you can see the effect we're getting is very similar to what you're used to in staircase. The mirror is essentially doubling the frequency of the video coming into the source. We also have the dark output, which is pretty cool, and a lights output. So if we wanted to, we could start building a cool mix and color chords of these different outputs. We could also start mixing them together. So again, I'm going to use the mixer section on the bridge, go back into my layer one, and I'm going to take the dark and the light, and try both of those into a mixer. There we go. So I'm now subtracting the lights from the darks. There's also a bunch of different combinations. You can subtract the darks from the lights. Might like that a little bit better. You can also add in a negative. So there's a lot of cool options here. Go back to this one. There we go. Let's keep it on that one. And then again, I can take the mirror output and put that on a second layer. Maybe play with the colors a little bit. There we go. If we want to introduce yet another image source, 
I'm going to take the H plus V output from my ramp here. I'm going to go into the gamma processor. I'm going to take both the square and the log outputs and put these into a crossfader. So in this case, I'm going to use the crossfader on the pendulum because that has a nice manual control. You could also use the crossfader on the bridge, of course. And I'm going to take that output, put that into layer three. Turn my other layers all the way off just so we can see this pretty clearly. And turn this elbow down. So now you can see this ramp coming from the diver. As we crossfade, we get the full range of gamma possibilities. So we go from looking at the square output to looking at the log output. And of course, we can add modulation to this. So let's take this LFO, put that onto the crossfade VC control. And there we have our ramp. So now I'll start to put some color in here. And then we could use some LFOs and other things to start to adjust, add some more animation. Let's do that in the phase input instead. There we go. And because we're using the diver as our ramp, we could start to we could start to animate that as well. And so with just a couple basic image sources, you can create a lot of complexity by using the arch. You'll also notice we still have four outputs on the arch that we're not using. These can all be patched into different places in a larger and more complex system. So in the next patch, we're going to look at one last way to use arch. So now that you've seen how we can use arch to create more complex patterns and shapes, let's take a look at using it in a colorizer workflow. This would work wonderfully with any external video signals, but for the sake of simplicity, in this case, I'm going to use a pattern that I generated on the memory palace. So I have a pretty simple image playing here off my memory palace. Let's speed that up just a little bit. There's a pretty good range of grayscale information. So we're going to start taking this into the arch and look at some different ways we can play with it. So to start with, I'm actually going to go into the gamma processor first. And we could take a look at this again. So there you see our square output and our log output. And what I'm going to do in this case, is I'm going to take my square and log outputs, and I'm going to plug those two into the logic processor. As we saw in the last example, by mixing these, you can get some pretty interesting results. And on the logic processor, you should as well. So you can see here, got my min, got my max, Got my absolute, my intersection, and my clip outputs. By taking these different outputs to different destinations in my patch, I can get some pretty extreme colorizations. So I'm going to move this clip back to channel 3. And the reason I'm putting this on channel 3 is because it has a big broad area of color. If I put this on top of everything else, I'd probably miss out on some detail. Next, I'm going to take another output, let's say the intersection output. And let's put that into the rectifier. We'll just pretty simply look at the mirror output here. Let's see what that looks like. Cool. So that's giving me those cutout areas. And then I can take the absolute output or any other output. I'm going to plug that into the source of my topogram again to get a key. Let's take a look at one of those outputs. So again, this just gives me one more option. Could also go into the max outputs, min outputs, try those. I think absolute is going to be the best for this case. 
I can play with my negative switch up here, change the whole thing. And I can play with a lot of different outputs from the topogram. Maybe I'll take one of the min outputs. And now I can play with some of the controls in my memory palace patch. Speed that up a little bit. Well, the topogram is giving me a nice effect, if I remove it from the patch, we still have a very effective three-channel colorizer. So in that way, just using the arch, you can take a grayscale image and generate three separate color channels. Even if you don't have a color chords, you could still use these images directly into the RGB inputs of a visual cortex or other colorizer. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how to get started with the arch. It's a great way to take simple incoming signals and generate a number of interrelated but separate signals for further processing. And as you can see, the three sections of arch work beautifully together to give you multiple discrete outputs. We hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, please leave any questions or ideas for future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.